I'd like to grow a rat tail. A rat tail? What do you think? No, Just I wouldn't like that. Maybe three, four <laughs> inches? No. That's You're not cool. happening. Anakin Skywalker? I don't know who that is. <laughs> you don't know who Anakin Skywalker is? <laughs> I mean, is? I'm not a Star Wars fan, but I still know that. Skywalker. Yeah. yeah that, make, that does um, ring mm-hmm. a bell. He's like, Luke, I am your father. He <laughs> becomes Darth Vader. Anakin yeah, becomes so. Darth Vader. And he was played by Christian something. I forget his last name. He was really hot. In Christian day. Bale? No. <laughs> his real name is Christian something. He was in Star Wars 1, which is the 90s, I believe, Star Wars. And at the time when it came out, every girl had a crush on him. He was a dream boat. He was mm. a cutie. I don't know. Thanks for letting me know that. Yeah. You'll have to watch them all. Or I else guess I will. Yeah. Everyone on the internet's going to be mad at you. I feel um, really young. Yeah, same. <laughs> I feel like you would look really cute with, like, hair to your chin, maybe. Oh, my God. Thank you. I had short hair. Basically, I used to be blonde, and I kind of fucked up my hair really bad, like, right around when I was 18. And then I got into the industry, and I realized, you know, they're getting to know me as this little blonde girl, and that's not who I want to be. That's not really who I am. Mm -hmm. So I went back to brunette, and then I cut my hair kind of short like here ish and then it took some time to grow back but now it's now it's finally like long so you're probably like not wanting to let that go too because you just got it well I just got some layers Mm because uh I go to this one hairstylist and she does like vintage haircuts Mm -hmm. I love everything vintage everything retro is like totally my thing yeah same um so yeah and yeah, that's just what it I like. It looks super cute. Thank you. I kind of try to get that, like, flippy hairstyle going, too, but my hair is so thin that I feel yeah. like it doesn't, like, hold it doesn't the look body. doesn't thin. It looks really pretty. Oh, thank you. But, uh, yeah, I've struggled with my hair my whole life because I'm, I'm just, like, Jewish, so I have a lot of hair, and it's really thick, and it just used to be, like, so frizzy and big, mm-hmm. and it, it looks really weird. But now i found people who know how to handle it. it it's all just a matter of finding a good hairstylist yeah exactly yeah. I've always been jealous of people that have super thick hair you always want what you can't have I guess yeah it's funny because I was always jealous of people with like thin straight hair yeah I was like my life would be so easy if I just More had manageable. straight hair mm-hmm. perspective exactly yeah. Welcome back to a new episode of Cute Girls Only. I am Jules, your podcast host, and today I have Jane Wild as my guest. So yeah, thank, thank you for being on. Thanks for having me. I'm super happy to be here and finally meet you guys. I was watching your episode with Lumi, and I loved it. It was oh, just good. such a fun, laid-back vibe, and I just love her. Yeah, she's <laughs> the best. Yeah, she's really sweet. We had a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so I was curious when we were talking about your experience getting in the industry. Did you have, like, any um, promiscuous things that you did maybe when you were younger that, like, led to you starting that right as when you were 18? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't even know because, like, on one hand, you want to be lighthearted about it and be like, oh, you know, I was such, like, a little slut as Mm -hmm. a teen, but then also I kind of look at it like it's a little dark. When you think about it, it's kind of fucked up. Yeah. Um, Definitely stuff I've done and been through is, like, not as bad as what other people have experienced, but, yeah, like, well, I started having sex when I was, like, 15, Mm -hmm. which is kind of young, and then when I was, like, 17... I would go on this website with my friends, uh, Seeking Arrangement, which okay. is like a sugar daddy website. They don't check age verification, which is so weird. Damn. And so outdated when you really think about it. Um, but yeah, so we would do that and then we would just like meet guys and, uh, you know, do their thing and get money for weed and clothes and just little stuff like that. So I was already like kind of used to, uh, being around older men and and liking older men. So then when I was 18 and I met an older man, I wasn't, like, phased by it. I was very much like, oh, this is, like, normal for me, even Mm -hmm. though it was not normal at all. Right, you felt comfortable. Maybe you looked up to him. 
Oh, I definitely did. It was, uh, it's such a weird thing. Like, I would definitely call it grooming. And it's weird because people, they think that grooming is, like, a specifically, like, underage type thing. Oh, you're grooming someone. So when they turn 18, it's, like, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. But, uh... It's okay. not because yeah. <laughs> 18 doesn't just because you're a legal adult, like, you know, you're not smart or conscious of the decisions you're yeah. making. So for sure, you're still pretty much a child. I feel like like yeah. just because all of a sudden, yeah, you turn 18 doesn't mean like your brain suddenly fully developed. No, not at all. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will say personally, there's no difference from when I was 17 to when I was 18. I was the exact same person. Mm-hmm. So definitely got mixed up in some shit that I shouldn't have been in. And, you know, I guess you could just chalk that up to being like a dumb kid mm-hmm. <laughs> pretty much. But it had it had consequences, I would say. How did he like how did you meet this guy? So I met this guy through Craigslist. Interesting. Whenever I tell this story, I just obviously now I look back and I cringe because I'm just like, it's so dumb. It's so reckless and stupid and just everything bad that you could do. But um, I was working at a clothing store and I just didn't want to be doing that job anymore. Um, So I was Googling and looking up like jobs I can do from home. At this point, like I didn't think about sex work at all. Like I never thought I would do porn or anything. I had, you know, done the things for, like with my friends or whatever mm-hmm. at 17, but I wasn't thinking, oh, I want that to be my job. And then I found this Craigslist ad for a webcam studio that said you can make a lot of money per week. And I was like, you know, that sounds interesting. I I'm I want to look into it. I'm interested. Mm-hmm. Um, so I answered this ad on craigslist and then this guy was like oh i can come pick you up and meet you and i gave him my address and i i let him pick me up and we met and yeah i don't know he was very charismatic and uh i trusted him i believed him that's the 18 year old Mm -hmm. just being stupid i guess but you know it's like i think people when you want to believe something and you really want something, your brain will, like, make it easier to do that, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Were you scared when he was coming to pick you up? Were you worried, like, oh, maybe this is going to lead into something bad? Or were you just, like, kind of naive? and Definitely naive. And also, like, I had so much experience already with getting picked up by right. weird men, which is... <laughs> so crazy to even think about I don't really talk about that part of my life that much like I mostly just when I've started telling the story I'll talk about starting when I was 18 not so much the stuff before because it's like a tricky being underage it's a tricky area but like it's the reality that was Mm -hmm. my life um so no I wasn't really worried I was more just uh curious and kind of excited to see like what it was gonna be um And yeah, I just, it kind of just went from there. Like I met him and he was giving me all this information and you know how people are and they want to convince you of something. They make it seem like really amazing and Mm -hmm. don't talk about the bad parts, only the good parts and kind of exaggerate things. So yeah, my little naive ass (laughs) believed everything. (laughs) Did you talk to any of your friends at the time or any family members about this? Um, family members. So once I already decided that I was going to do webcamming and like I was going to do it for sure, I told my family, I didn't ask permission because it kind of was like, I do my own thing. They don't really have that type of like authority over me, which I guess is a whole nother problem (laughs) in a ball game. But, uh, I told them, I was like, look, this is what I want to do. I already told you guys I'm not going to college. I That's not what I want. And they were just like, yeah, like, I guess in their mind, they're like, well, what are we going to do to stop you? So just as long as you're, I guess they saw it as like a safer thing because it's just webcamming. It's mm-hmm. not like going out and meeting people. It's right. uh, doing it from your home. As far as friends, I didn't really tell friends about it because I don't know. I guess I was just... I don't think I was embarrassed. I don't I don't really know why I didn't. 
I think I just wanted to keep it private. I didn't know if it was going to work out or what was going to happen. And also, I think uh, deep down, a little part of me, this subconscious part of me that has always been with me, like my most intelligent self, kind of knew that it was like a little shady. Right. And didn't want someone to like confirm those thoughts out loud and being like, what are you doing? So I I kept it to myself for a long time. Yeah, I feel like as people get older, like the biggest difference is we start listening to that voice. Like we know it's it's always there and we like can feel like when we're doing something, oh, this might be wrong. But a lot of times when we're young, we just like ignore it. But yeah, yeah, as we get older, we start to realize, oh, maybe we should start listening to that. Yeah, I definitely now it's just so much has changed and. I take that little voice. Well, it's much louder mm-hmm. nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> it's like more uh, in tune with my just everything in me. Yeah. But I definitely take it into consideration more. Whereas back then, I think I was just kind of coping. Like I was like, this is the situation I'm in. You know, whatever's happened in my life has led me here. And I want to be successful. I was very focused on being successful. Like mm-hmm. my worst, biggest fear is being a failure still to this day like I can't cope with that I will do anything to uh not feel that feeling of like wow I failed I didn't I wasn't able to do what I tried to do so does a success for you like making money yeah just I guess not not struggling Mm -hmm. not having to like be concerned with a lot of like things that most people are concerned about day to day just uh, having a job and disappointing my family because, you know, when I was younger, it was, and I don't know if it's changed much, but in school, there was no uh, talk of an alternative path. It was like you go to college yeah. and then you graduate and get a job and have a house or whatever. <laughs> but uh, I started to feel like, well, maybe that's not right for me. Mm-hmm. And I, I applied to colleges, I got in, I was going to go to a SUNY college. And then at the last minute, I decided I can't, I don't want to. So I had no direction at that point, and I had anxiety. I was like, I don't want my parents to feel like I'm just this, like, bum Mm -hmm. or this burden just, like, living in their house. It's a lot of, like, uh, self-being mean to myself (laughs) inside. Um, So that was kind of what drove me, I guess, in that direction was just not wanting to feel like a failure and feel like I have no direction I'm drowning I don't know what I'm doing yeah that definitely makes sense and like you saw the thing on Craigslist you're like this seems like something to be successful in yeah I mean the way that like I wish well obviously I don't wish anyone would know this person that I had to know but if people could see like how charismatic he really was like he just had this way of uh talking and convincing me that he knew so much and it I really think to this day I think he was a total bullshit artist like I don't think any of it was true or maybe a little bit could have been true and a lot was embellished there's no way to know but it's how just, old was he he I think he was like 34 Okay. Just Can so you crazy. guys summarize a little bit what you're talking about? Because not everyone's read that article. Oh, yeah. So, uh, well, there was an article. I did an article with the Daily Beast um, talking about my experience of trafficking, I guess you can call it. You can call it trafficking. I still have this, like, weird feeling where I don't like to use that word because I don't like to be, like, a victim label because um, I've done so much more than that and I've been able to like rise above that Mm -hmm. so I don't really want to like bring myself back down to that and be like I'm a victim of trafficking but like that that is what happened Mm -hmm. so I guess I need to call it that it's important to call it that for me because I want other people to understand like trafficking is not always like uh, being kidnapped and kept in a box or something it can happen just in your own house um so that's what I went through. And then I I did a film this year in my industry. I, I wrote and directed and acted in a film about that experience. So that's why I did the article with the Daily Beast, just kind of introducing that and talking about that. And yeah, I did a film about it. It's still so weird to uh, 
because now the film's out and everything and people really liked it but it's just still so weird that that experience is like turned into a movie yeah that must be so wild for you it's kind of weird I want to watch it where can I watch it so it's on the adult website it's called adult time okay I can totally just give you my account to use to watch it it. but yeah um and you know it has uh, sex scenes in it because obviously it's a pornographic film Mm -hmm. I don't even know if that's the right word it's more it's an adult movie yeah but uh the sex scenes are very much you know how in porn movies sometimes it's like there will be acting and something's going on and then it's oh we interrupt this scene to do a 45 minute irrelevant sex scene that has nothing to do with the plot and then go back to the plot or like a musical when they just interrupt it and start singing Mm -hmm. but in this case I I really wanted the um sexual scenes to be really incorporated in the plot where uh you could just watch it and you know you're not necessarily getting off to it but it's just part of the film like it adds context to the film it's it makes it more raw maybe definitely um I really wanted to is the word emulate or emanate emulate Emulate, yeah Yeah, I wanted to emulate the filmmaker uh, Sean Baker because he does he has done like a lot of independent films and he incorporates like porn stars sex workers into his films and really humanizes them but it has a very like minimalist vibe it's not like super over the top like a crazy action movie with special effects it's mm-hmm. super low budget stuff and i just really wanted my story to be depicted like that i just had this feeling like that's just what it is like you know it's not like some crazy outrageous story where I had to like run away from these kidnappers or something and you know Mm -hmm. nobody got killed but it could be just as emotionally damaging for you right absolutely and I felt like that minimalist vibe was the best way to kind of depict and show people the real experience because you know this whole thing happened over the course of like a year from 2016 to 2017 And uh, not every moment of that year was completely traumatizing and sometimes were actually really good and I felt happy. Um, So I kind of wanted to just show like a series of moments throughout the year and kind of like little like vignettes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we were able to achieve that. I was so lucky. The people I worked with just totally understood exactly what I wanted to do and, and really made it happen. So how was that, like, acting in that movie that's, like, (laughs) you're basically, like, putting yourself back into that time frame? Yeah. Um, It was an interesting experience, totally unique, never done anything like that, obviously, and I doubt I ever will again. Um, it It was easier, it was easy in some ways and hard in other ways. I think it was easy because playing myself so Mm -hmm. I don't need to like try to do these little mannerisms or try to imitate anyone I just really would be myself but hard because I was not playing the current version of myself that's been through everything I've been through but I kind of had to go back in time and yeah turn on this like naive you know version of my brain that was being traumatized like throughout that year um so it was it was interesting. I was really lucky. The person that, you know, played alongside me that I chose to play the the man in the situation is someone that I've worked with for uh, almost five years. And he's just such an amazing person, an amazing actor. I really knew that nobody else would be able to go there mm-hmm. and not make it like comical, not make it kind of silly or anything and really just uh understood the gravity of what I went through and it's funny because that guy his name is Seth Gamble he's a a really uh amazing performer and he I'm a big fan of his work are you really (laughs) oh yeah he's a great guy I'm a big uh, porn nerd. I yeah, watch. He is. I know. I know all the names. Not oh. all of them, but I know. I he love knows that. more about that than I do. <laughs> yeah. Because I was a big porn nerd. Like that during that year, I kind of like I had my own Twitter account, and I 
started to follow all the people from the industry. So that's kind of when I realized, like, secretly I started to think, I want to be in the porn industry. I don't want to do this webcam shit. But the guy was not. Seth Gamble's got a good yeah. chest. Oh, Probably yeah. He does a lot of push ups. He has yeah. Really defined pectoral muscles. He does, and big arms. I like as his well. chest hair, too. It's like perfectly manicured. <laughs> I need to see a picture of this man. Oh, my God. He, no, he's going to love this. Like, he's oh, going to yeah. clip this and post it on social media. Oh, yeah. No homo either. I'm just saying no. bro to bro. I'm not trying to. Yeah. You're just jealous. Suck him off or or what? Anything. You want him? Oh, yeah. I'm jealous. I wish I, if I had a bod like that, I'd be running the world. Yeah. Well, he pretty much does run the world. I'd be a multi-millionaire. Like in the industry, he yeah, does. Yeah, our industry. But, oh, okay, uh, good. <laughs> so he was actually my first, I did my first scene ever January 2018, and he was my first ever scene partner. So he knew me, you know, this this crazy situation I was in ended September 2017, so only... Like, about three months or so later, I flew to Florida and did my first scene with him. So he literally knew me. He was one of the first people to know me immediately after Mm -hmm. that situation happened. So for him to, like, come and then be able to do this role with me, it just felt really special for me. And he did such a good job. It, It honestly scared me in some moments. It was, yeah, the other part that was hard was just having to depict like some of the more uh, difficult or traumatizing moments that I went through and uh, yeah yeah I feel like it would be almost a good opportunity to heal because you're going back there and having to face that so even though it was probably really difficult hopefully you grew through that oh yeah. yeah I definitely feel like it healed me a lot and I had never uh, addressed a lot of these things, like, and certain things started, like, just popping up again that I didn't even think about, like, these little moments, and it's been, it's been a very eye-opening year, because when this year started, I had no idea I was going to do this film. I got the idea, I think, around March, and I approached, you know, the, the, my co-director and the company about doing it, and they were totally into it. And then the idea grew from there. Um, and it's just, it's so surreal, like, for it to have, it's completely happened and it's been out for almost two months at this point. How I, does it work, sorry to interrupt okay. you. Go for it. How does it work when you have this idea, you've obviously worked with a lot of different companies that make mm-hmm. adult movies. Yeah. Did you approach a few different ones and saw who aligned best with you on it did you just say i want to do it with this company you knew right away it was this company that you wanted to work with yeah i knew it was going to be adult time um adult time they have done model collaborations is what they call it in the past where uh, they give you the opportunity to write a scene and then have it you know produced which i was able to do that years ago i wrote like a normal length scene, like a 40 mm-hmm. minute scene. And or I came up with the idea for it. And so you had worked with them once before. Previously. Yes. I worked with them yeah. many times over the years. But once before where you wrote the idea. And yeah. Similar to this. Where I wrote it. And then in the past, I want to say two or three years or so, they had done multiple biopics, um, like full length feature films. Um, and I just thought that was so powerful. And no other company really done stuff like that Mm -hmm. so I knew that if it was going to be any company that would be willing to do it and want to it would be them and the director Brie um she did her biopic was about her life it was called teenage lesbian and it was just about her life growing up as a teenager being a lesbian Mm -hmm. and uh what that was like in the 90s it was totally different than what it's like now yeah um, and when I watched that film, it was nothing like, and I was nothing like a porn. I swear to fucking God, like it was, that wasn't a regular porn movie. It was, it really touched my heart and I cried and wow. yeah. So I highly recommend when I give you my login, I recommend yeah. checking that out too. Yeah, Some of these pornos are getting intense, like Very realistic, intense. like a pure taboo. Oh yeah. Have you seen so that? pure taboo, that's the company that was doing the, or the site that would do the model collaborations. Oh, same, same, so same company. Yeah. Oh, got so it, they're yeah. under like the adult time. Got it. Yeah. Umbrella. That, those scenes, some of them are so intense and 
dramatic and yeah. scandalous. You're like, damn, this feels like you're watching a movie. Yeah, because cool. uh, the evolution of that brand is kind of interesting because I think they started around 2017 and they got so much accolades and so much praise for just being so different. And then, you know, it, it kind of started to push the boundary a little bit. And then, like, Me Too happened. And then, Oh, did they get in trouble? Not in trouble. I wouldn't yeah. call it in trouble. Well, Someone some- tried to get them in trouble? Some people in general have gotten in trouble, but it it has nothing to do with the content. But because of the type of content where like some of the scenes like the consent would be a little bit muddy Mm -hmm. and there would be, you know, like some weird. Right. It's all entertainment at the end of the day. But yeah, it's not like you don't see that in other movies. Right. But because it's like pornography, of course, people are going to like freak out about it. So they kind of toned down their content a little and they don't do as intense. Got it. It's more just like, you know, like a Brazzers or a a more silly, like, oh my God, like my stepmom is manipulating me into having sex with her. Like, Mm -hmm. but, uh, no, they always, just from the past, I knew that they were open to uh, do collabs like that and to to hear someone's story and to turn it into a, a film or art or whatever. So That's amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, have you thought about the guy that, like, you, you he reached out to you on Craigslist? Have you thought of him watching this movie or, like, knowing what you're doing now? Um, I've definitely thought about it. I try not to because it's, I don't want to think about yeah. him, but you know, I just, I don't really care is what I have to say about it. I don't think that I just have this feeling that he's done this to so many girls and that he's just like a literal scam artist, um, that that's what he does. So I don't think that I was special or unique. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sure he was while it was happening to me, I'm sure he was doing it to other girls at the same time then. And, you know, not every girl makes the decision after having that happen to just go straight into porn and to do more sex work and mm-hmm. just throw themselves in it. Um, and people have asked me, they're like, they just don't, not in a rude way, they just don't understand. They're like, if you were so traumatized and you just went through something so bad in sex work, like, why would you stay and go deeper into it? And I was like, I didn't want to be a failure. Right. Because I feel like like your core thing. Yeah. Because if I just stopped and I was like, oh, my God, I'm so traumatized. Like, I don't want to do sex work anymore. Oh, my God, I failed. Like, I couldn't. Just such a sick mentality because, like, you know, I was, like, taken advantage of. It wasn't my choice. But... Yeah, that's how I viewed it and viewed myself. I was like, if I just, you know, went back to some minimum wage job or I didn't have a job or whatever, I would have felt like a huge fucking failure and just really upset, Mm -hmm. more upset. So I I just like launched myself into a I already knew I wanted to do porn. So at that point, there was nothing holding me back. And I I just decided to do it. I was like, I literally have nothing to lose at this point. I'm already mm-hmm. naked. You know, I have my Twitter. I'm already doing all this stuff. So I may as well just go like full send. Like, yeah. And you were you're super successful now. So you definitely you. did not fail. <laughs> yeah. But I still have, you know, those feelings don't go away no matter how successful you are. I definitely still have my moments of doubt or I compare myself and I'm, yeah. why am I not as successful as them? Why didn't I get mm-hmm. that or that? But, you know, just, I guess in general, you put it in perspective, it, it's, it's worked in my favor. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah, I feel like so many, I think the majority of people always think that, like, why am I not as successful as this person, blah, 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 blah. And it's just jipping yourself of your own happiness. Right, it is. And it's really just a miserable way to be. It's really hard to be in the mainstream porn industry and not compare yourself to other people. I can only imagine. Like, I'm not in mainstream, but I compare myself to, like, mm -hmm. all the girls. And I'm like, why am I not making as much money right as well. and yeah. I even I compare myself to like OnlyFans girls that you know just started a year ago and I'm like why are they blah 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 why are they more successful and I'm I just try to remember like we have a totally different path like it, right. they have nothing to do with each other and 
some people are just going to be more successful than you, and that doesn't mean that you're not doing well. Well, yeah, or that you're not good enough, you know? Yeah. For sure. It's it's easy to, you know, say it out loud now talking to you, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when I'm by myself, it's it's harder to convince it's, me. It's yeah. like that in all industries. I compare myself to people in my industry. Mm-hmm. If you work at a Fortune 500 company, you're yeah. comparing yourself to your yeah. boss and your other coworkers. I Everyone's feel like in competition. It's human nature. I agree, but like some, I feel like it is a little bit more difficult for girls that are in sex work or just like making money off of their appearance because it's, I guess it it, it is like kind of similar because you're making money off of like your brain. Totally, yeah. actors yeah. compare so themselves not. to other actor and yeah. actresses, writers, and just writers. the opportunities you get and stuff. But it's funny because like when it comes to uh, comedians and sex workers, or specifically like porn OnlyFans type stuff, there's so many similarities between the two industries that I've noticed. And I love comedy, and I think you know. It's just, it's interesting how people wouldn't think that, but it really is. Like, it's very vulnerable. You're putting yourself out there in a way, and you're basically just asking to not be rejected. Like, whether (laughs) Mm -hmm. you're showing your tits and your pussy or you're telling jokes that you wrote that you think are funny and you want someone to laugh at them, it's like, Mm -hmm. please, like, don't reject me. And if they do, it feels so bad. Like, it feels terrible. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah, it's funny. Like everyone that I've had on the podcast so far has said, like, there's so many. Like they brought up comedy and said, like, there's so much, so so many similarities, or how they want like the two worlds to blend and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, sex work and just porn bleeds into everything, every industry, because mm-hmm. people are obsessed with it and they act like they're not, but they are. Everyone loves sex and especially the people that act like it's so shameful or mm-hmm. like clean they're clean people or whatever like those are no. the biggest perverts out there yeah. the people that are saying that and they just keep it private it's it's funny cuz uh majority of people you know they go out they live their lives they do whatever they do publicly and then sex is like such a private thing and it's so taboo you could never be nude in public or posting nudes or talking about sex publicly and then we're just out here like that's just what we do like there's no shame and it and then there's other things that I want to keep private like uh you know my personal life certain things Mm -hmm. like my vulnerability my fears like that kind of stuff is more uh it's more taboo to Mm -hmm. me than than just sex I think sex is like not that taboo at all I don't know yeah it's definitely freeing being in sex work because yeah like I just I want to flash everybody yeah I do too and yeah it's funny like I've uh I've had people you know try to blackmail me or try to like hack my thing through whatsapp or whatever Mm -hmm. I had this one guy this random thing messaged me on whatsapp and was like uh he said, uh, send me so-and-so where I, I release the iCloud hack. And I was like, bro, you're going to release my nudes? Like, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, They're already, it, dude. <laughs> I post them for free or I post them all over the place anyway. You can find many nude pictures of me online. So, you know, it, it kind of felt good in that moment when that happened. I was like, wait. And I blocked him. I was mm-hmm. like, you don't have a power over me versus, like, you know, some regular person that maybe takes, like, private nudes or something for their partner. The fear of having those released and the stigma, um, you know, would be life-ruining for them mm-hmm. or just really scary. And we just, you know, it's a different kind of stigma that we deal with, but it's not a... It's not like a, oh, my God, I'm going to get found out. Like, right. I can't reveal what I'm doing. Yeah, um, I'm curious, when people ask you, like, what you do for work, what do you say? I usually just lie. Yeah. Um, Most of the time it happens in Ubers, Mm -hmm. because I take Ubers everywhere, and some of them are so fucking nosy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, mind your business, but I'll say something like uh, makeup artist, just because I know basic stuff about makeup. And then sometimes they start asking more questions like about makeup and I'm just yeah it's like (laughs) exasperated like please just shut the fuck up so what do you do to like shut them down 
one word answers and then put my headphones in and really look like <laughs> I'm doing something mm-hmm. very important here. But no, like I lie and it's not because I'm scared. Like I'm not scared of their reaction. I just, I don't know. I think sometimes people treat you differently, mm-hmm. whether it's good or bad or whatever. And Or I just j- like unwanted questions. So yeah. you, you're allowed to keep what you do for work private if that's what you want and that doesn't mean that you feel bad about what you do it's just like yeah not everybody needs to know I really value my privacy Mm -hmm. like you know online it's a totally different thing like when I stream on twitch or when I'm on twitter or doing whatever I do like I like to be an open book with my supporters and that's kind of been really good for me but when I'm out in the real world like walking around I totally keep to myself like I look down I don't like looking at people because I don't want to get recognized like I don't want anybody to like talk to me yeah I just I don't know I'm kind of an introvert in that way I guess I don't know if it has to do with uh being a sex worker and I'm just I'm like paranoid about something or Mm -hmm. I think I just really value my privacy and like being in my own space my own world yeah for sure like when you're out living your life you want it to be separate from when yeah totally social media totally separate I'm just a totally and I don't try when I'm online and stuff I don't try to put on a persona I definitely used to because I thought that that's what you're supposed to do Mm -hmm. and now I just really this year in particular since you know I did my film and it was the most authentic thing I've ever done I really just value like authenticity now even in porn like I don't want to do like these fake weird scenes anymore like weird sex positions I don't I don't like that stuff yeah and guys like you know when I go to hook up with guys that aren't in the industry sometimes they get so concerned and they think oh I'm not gonna like measure up to these male porn stars and the truth of the matter is like I will say this right now it's not the type of sex that I prefer to have yeah is the type that you have in porn (laughs) I definitely would take like what someone would think is like lame sex over a porn type sex I've I've fucked porn guys like brought them to my house off camera and they will literally fuck like it's a porn scene yeah like you know the over except for Seth Gamble he knows what he's doing yeah so <laughs> Sethy Sethy knows that that's my knows nickname <laughs> <laughs> um no but yeah like sometimes they will do like these they're just so used to it because that's all they do and a lot of them don't have like that much of a personal life because they work so much Mm -hmm. so they'll do you know like a in like a spoon position their leg will be like up in the air or just like an over doggy type thing where they're like squatting over me and I'm just that type of position is so the camera can see stuff that's not how I want to be fucked in my regular life I don't want it to be like oh we're performing yeah for sure very authentic vibes is what I want so Mm -hmm. just looking for that yeah (laughs) that's totally understandable so you like missionary I love missionary I don't know I like it too that's my preferred it got such a bad rap at some point but it's really just I mean if you want to feel connected I guess missionary like if you're totally not in tune with each other and it's really just like you know looking in other directions or whatever Mm -hmm. for people that aren't into sex I guess it's the easiest way to get the job done I personally think doggy is yeah uh, I was about to say or just like having the girl on her side yeah just just like yeah just do it but for Um, me missionary can be it has the potential to be by far the best position yeah it just depends what you do with it I definitely agree (laughs) A lot of eye contact. Yeah. yeah, it's like the lovemaking position. Oh, absolutely. Uh-huh. And, you know, yeah, I don't get the bad reputation. Like, it's my fave. If I could just do that the whole time, like, if somebody wanted to just do, like, only missionary, I would be totally fine with that. I don't care about all this changing position stuff. I think I'm just... Uh, Changing positions is just to make it so the guy lasts longer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to, like, give a little break. <laughs> no guy gets bored sure. of a position. It's just, like, I should pretend like we should switch positions so that I don't come right now. 
Yeah. yeah. Or uh, they feel like they need to compensate or something or because yeah. I do porn, they're like thinking, right. oh, I want to do all these different and I'm used right. to and that's what I like. But do you usually tell the people that you hook up with beforehand that you're a porn star or do you sometimes well, lie? I haven't, I mean, this year in particular, it's been a little bit slow. I've kind of just been working on myself a lot and dealing with, like, whatever stuff has mm-hmm. come up. Um, but, yeah, I've definitely, I don't hook up with people that don't know because I'm not trying to surprise anyone. I'm not trying to find out that somebody's, like, totally not okay with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, informed consent, like, just so you know, this is what I do. And if you have a problem with that, we probably should never meet mm-hmm. because I wouldn't like you and you wouldn't like me. So, but yeah, I've been with guys and uh, usually, I mean, to their credit, it's it's a pretty normal experience. Like nobody, I don't think that, I call them civilian guys. Mm-hmm. That's like the official term, I guess. But I don't think they have a, uh, this high expectation for me although you know I do lay it down I do my thing but uh (laughs) not in like a pornographic type way if that makes sense just in like a a sexual way yeah like I feel really connected to you and I want you to have an amazing experience mutually obviously but yeah I do my thing uh what's your craziest sexual experience that you've had oh my god like in porn or just in general? Mm, let's do it in general. Okay. In general, probably I haven't really been in any like big orgies, but I did a, this was many years ago. Not many in perspective, like maybe five or four, but That's kind of, yeah. I did a couple swap type thing where, and it wasn't a boyfriend or anything. I was just hanging out with this guy, another performer in Florida and uh, we went over to another guy's house that had a girlfriend and we were all just hanging out and then yeah we just decided to like all fuck wow so I, I was fucking the other guy and then they we it was just everybody fucked each other except the guys didn't fuck each other that would have been cool but mm-hmm. <laughs> no it was and it was fun it was just really kinky and when you're with people that are really like into that type of thing Uh it can be really fun but haven't really done much off-camera stuff like that in in a while I think I would like to but I don't there's so many weirdos like Mm -hmm. I don't want to attract you know weird people that are just like and having experiences like that is not like an easy thing to come by (laughs) no it's not because yeah like I said I really like the authenticity and like organic stuff and so I'm very careful like if I try to plan things then I get turned off Mm -hmm. like if I'm like oh why don't you come over and then we can like uh I don't I wouldn't be like oh we're gonna fuck because then it's just like uh, it's like too planned out yeah and it's like pressure too because then if you don't then it's like oh he came over here for nothing yeah (laughs) Yeah. I I tell a guy oh come hang out or I'll, I'll come say hi or something like that and you know, some then it kind of builds the tension more. Yeah, I have for sure. all these little tricks and stuff. But when you say things like that and you kind of leave it to the imagination, it definitely uh, builds the tension more. And mm-hmm. you're wondering, like, well, are we hanging out or like what's yeah, gonna like, happen? <laughs> and, like, are we actually gonna fuck yeah. or are we just gonna go a little cuddle? And, <laughs> yeah, no, but honestly, like. Not cuddling, like, not after sex cuddling, but you know the type of cuddling where you're just, like, laying on the couch and you're, like, on top of a guy and then you're just, like, mm-hmm. like that? Like, that's that's better than sex for me. <laughs> like, honestly, I would rather... You like the teasing? Yeah, yeah, like, grinding and stuff. I think I'd rather do that than actually have sex because a lot of the time, unfortunately, like, because of expectations or just nerves or whatever, like, people tend to build sex into this like crazy thing like Mm -hmm. oh just this crazy thing in their mind like they're so intimidated by it and then it doesn't live up to what you think it's going to be or it's just not what you want but with grinding it's like you're just you're just using your imagination to think about how turned on you are and, and what could happen do you ever get to the point where you're like, okay, now I want to fuck. Like, after you've been grinding for a while, like, you can't help it, yeah. but you just need it. Yeah, and then that's when I start to go <laughs> like that <laughs> on the on the dick. Yeah. 
Um, there was this one time when I was seeing this guy and he had like just gotten out of a long-term relationship and he was like, I don't want to have sex for a while. And I was like, okay. So when we would hang out, we would just like make out and stuff, Mm -hmm. but he, we would like grind. And there was this one time when we were like completely naked in the back of my car grinding. And I was like, God, please, for the love of God, just put it in. Yeah, literally. At that point, like, 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 please. (laughs) Yeah. At that point, it's like, okay. If you're naked, I feel like there's kind of an expectation at a yeah. certain point that, like, it is going to happen. Um, but, like, I don't know. Grinding in underwear is really fun mm-hmm. for me. And I didn't used to have such an appreciation for it. But being in the porn industry for almost five years now has put so many things in perspective. And I just really want, like, normal sex, Mm -hmm. like, not, like, crazy pornographic. It's funny because so many people want to be in porn because they think, oh, it must be so amazing to, like, have sex all the time, but they just don't understand, like, it really is work. Like, it's not the type of sex where you're just, like, leisurely enjoying yourself Mm -hmm. it's it's about doing something for someone else which is the people watching so you have to be in whatever position and do it for an extremely long amount of time where nobody wants to do it for that long and Mm -hmm. do these dumb plots and just all this stuff (laughs) where I'm just like I just want to do like a normal sex yeah (laughs) do you ever get to shoot like normal type scenes or is it always kind of like that's my only fans and yeah. even then it's like mm, I'm just maybe I'm just very picky or particular but I don't like the whole uh the whole way that people go about like there will be guys or whatever that will hit me up and be like oh do you want to collab for only fans or do you want to do content and I don't I just don't like that because it just feels like so fake like we're going to get together and just pretend that we have this chemistry or this connection and it's just going to be like this fake connection. I used to be okay with it and be like, well, I'm just having a connection for like an hour and then I go my separate ways. But Mm -hmm. no, I just don't like that anymore. Like it just feels super fake and I just want to be like hanging out with someone that I like and then we start to kiss and then we have sex. Like I don't want to like plan you know what I mean like for your only fans because I feel like porn is kind of like that like you're just yeah faking the connection right yeah and even for only fans it's like it's just really I basically want to just find someone that I really like feel a strong connection with and film stuff with them yeah. where it's like whether the camera's on or off it's still gonna be um comfortable uh, yeah like a uh real experience not like a what's the opposite of authentic like word um fake fake, yeah yeah fake so I don't that's just I totally reject that kind of stuff and yeah I think that's just where I'm at right now it could change but I'm definitely rejecting any type of like fakeness or just feeling like oh this is like too planned Mm -hmm. I just want it to be really organic so that's, that's a totally struggle fair. for me. So it sounds like maybe you want a boyfriend. I think I want a boyfriend, but also, yeah. uh, it's just so hard because I don't love. know. Huh? Just looking for true love. Yeah. It's hard because I don't know what I want. Like, I think I do want a partner, but I don't think I want a partner that's also in the industry with me because I don't personally know how I feel about them being with other people. And I don't know if I would want to be with other people either if I have a partner. But then I don't know. I've never, like, been with only one person. I've always just been free to do as I please and do what I want. So I don't know how I would, like, feel about that. It's just all very new to me. So you've never been in, like, a long-term serious relationship? No. I had a boyfriend for, like, two months, like, two years ago. And that did not work out. Um... He, he said, like, that he was cool with what I do, and, you know, he just, I don't think he was. He never came out and said, oh, I want you to stop, or I don't mm-hmm. want you to work with other guys, but I could just tell that he was, like, very insecure about it, and that made me feel insecure about it. Like, oh, am I doing something wrong? And I'm not doing anything wrong, but 
it just wasn't, like, the right person or the right time. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think, like, I would love to find someone that would want to film videos with me, but not necessarily, like, be in the industry. Yeah. Um, if that makes sense. But yeah, definitely. It's just, like, basically a unicorn. <laughs> so uh, my unicorn, if you're out there. But I also don't like uh, simpy guys. You don't like simpy guys? No, I love not simpy at all. guys. I don't like guys to simp. I like Why do you them. look at me over when you said that? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a simp. I am not. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't like guys that are uh, like, oh, my God, you're so you're my perfect queen. Like, no, I just want to be yeah. treated like a normal person, like a regular human that they like. That's interesting, though. Yeah. Like, I wonder why you I don't know. Don't want that because doesn't everybody want to mm. feel like. I mean, I want to feel special and mm-hmm. appreciated, but not in like a way like, oh, you're my fan. There's definitely, oh, okay. like, a line For where, sure. uh, you know, how people worship and they're mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, you're the most beautiful queen and I would do anything to be with you. Like, yeah, I don't. It's cheesy. Yeah, it's cheesy. And I just maybe I don't know. I get turned off from that. That's just like my taste. Yeah, that's fair. I feel like that's that's different from the simp that I like. Yeah. The simp style. What kind of simp style do you like? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just like a guy to be, like, fully in love with me and, like, do anything for me and, yeah, just make me feel, like, super special. But, yeah, yeah, definitely not, like, fan. Yeah. No, I like that. If that's what simpy is, then I like that kind of simpy. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I just, um, a guy that, uh, it's so hard to describe. It's hard to put it in words. And I don't want to come across like I don't appreciate my simps because I obviously (laughs) do. But, uh as far as you know i just want to be treated like not like someone that you're like oh my god i love that you do porn like mm-hmm. i think you're so amazing because of like just totally not in the equation you know maybe you want someone that doesn't even watch porn yeah exactly yeah. no i well that person doesn't exist yeah, they do. They do. Point do. One percent of, how many what percentage of guys do you think watch porn 98% I, I think know. it's I've just maybe uh, not necessarily that doesn't watch porn, but somebody that uh, doesn't really, like, they're not super in tune with, right, like, right, the right. intricacies. Oh, yeah, plenty of that. Mm-hmm. There's people that, like, keep up with it, and they know about every release and everything that's, that's going on. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think that's just not really what I'm looking for. To me, a simp is someone who would do something for that person that they wouldn't normally do, mm-hmm. like take someone to the airport. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's because simple. they want to something. spend time with that person, do yeah. and be nice to that person. Do not like I would because they want to be with that person. Right. Or they want mm-hmm. sex from that person. Like, yeah, I don't like that vibe. I like, don't like you're that. the literally. I wouldn't take my dad to the airport, but I'd probably take you to the airport. That's it. You'd probably, <laughs> but that's like a cute. That's a cute simpiness. Yeah, I yeah. think I would like that. I I don't know. I guess I'm just very inexperienced with that kind of thing, so I don't really know what I want. Which is, like, kind of hard when you're oh trying gosh. to be with someone. Yeah, we should do, like, a dating show a dating for you. Show. <laughs> Just download Hinge. Yeah, I was going to oh, say, no. Hinge is the best. The thing is, I, I was on Hinge a year ago, and I had a terrible experience oh, with no. this one guy. He was so weird. He started, um, I got very completely turned off by him because he started doing, like, this baby voice oh. that t- uh, immediately yeah. ruined it. And See then later. It's still the internet. You still got to be careful anywhere you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then... Uh, he made this one joke that was like not funny. He he was like a he called me like a heifer. What's a heifer? Like a prize pig. Oh. And I was just like what? And then he doubled down on that joke and I I don't know what he was thinking, but I immediately got so turned off and I yeah. was like as soon as you leave I'm blocking you. <laughs> um so yeah, it didn't I haven't had much luck with Hinge and I think uh, just online dating in general it turns me off as well because, again, it goes with, like, that organic, authentic thing. Like, it just feels like you're trying to force something, like, yeah. force two puzzle pieces together. And they may or may not fit, but they probably don't. Mm-hmm. The odds that you're going to find it and it's going to work is, like, it's happened. It's there. But it doesn't feel, like... You like the Natural. authenticity of yeah. things. Yeah. Maybe I just romanticize things a little and I mm-hmm. am like, I want to meet someone and just feel a connection with them and just start getting to know them and be like, wow, I really like you. And then them eventually be like, will you, 
you know, be mine or, but <laughs> you want to trip and have some guy catch you. you pretty, wanna, I guess. You want to stub your toe on a crack in the road and some guy goes, are you Would okay? You be, you'd probably be okay with like being set up. I think people. if it, yeah, with mutual friends, it's yeah. like different if you know someone in real life. But yeah, I'll never do the hinge thing or bumble or anything like that. And well, there you go. If you see a Jane on hinge, it's not really It's her. fake. Yeah. And there are, and my fake accounts are out of control. I feel I bad. Bet. I feel bad for people that fall for it, but also I don't because you're just, you're so stupid. Like, because. <laughs> I post on my real accounts, like I post, you know, these are my only accounts and then I'll get DMs like, oh, I've been talking to this person for a month and I just want to make sure that it's really you before I keep going. I'm like, first of all, you know what you're talking to me on my real account. So clearly you can see what my real account why would I just have some random fake account with a hundred followers? Maybe these people are just like they don't even care if it's fake. Yeah. Like they just are kind of like pretending that yeah. it's real. So. I think they're lonely and uh deep down they want it to be true. Mm-hmm. So but then most of the time it's a scam and they're just getting asked for like money or gift cards or some shit like that. And Damn. Yeah. Most of the time it's a guy like me on the other end that you're talking to. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I want to tell them, like, uh, to snap them out of it. I'm, mm-hmm. You're talking to a man. Yeah. It is a man. <laughs> like, it's not a, even a woman, not even a random woman. So, yeah, they have some deeper issues there than just yeah. getting scammed on yeah. the internet. I feel bad, but also, like, I don't because you're, you're encouraging these types of people uh-huh. that steal my identity and my likeness. You're encouraging them to keep doing it because you're showing them, oh, it works. People do fall for it. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of just have to let that go. I can't concern myself with it too much. It's exhausting. Yeah, for sure. Ari, do you have any questions for Jane? I wrote wrote one down, but I already forget what it was now. Where's the paper? It's on your phone, right? Yeah. I forget forget the question. (laughs) Are you serious? Yeah, you want to hand me your phone? I'll read it. Uh Uh-huh. You can come get it. (laughs) It's this one. I just clicked it. Okay, okay. I I told him he had to ask you this question because you'll just see. Okay. I don't, yeah, okay. (laughs) Okay. Uh, It doesn't, um, anyway, we're we're like hyping it up now. Yeah, we're hyping it up. Um, So I've noticed in my experience with, I don't want to be sexist here, uh, with with porn stars that a lot of them are batshit crazy. Okay. (laughs) What, and you're not. Yeah, you're uh, definitely well, very normal. You don't know. Um, Maybe I am. True, <laughs> true. Well, you're putting up a good fake. Thanks. <laughs> um, uh, what's, like, the craziest experience you've had? Because you've, you've been in the industry for how long now? Like, three, four years, you said? Almost five. For almost five years. You've probably had, like... A set maybe a scene that had to be canceled because you there's something happened or what's kind of like oh man and you don't need to say names but what's yeah. something where a girl did something and you were like holy shit this is scary or crazy does it have to like involve me or just like s- different no. like dramas yeah, you, there's just something that you know so much crazy drama um I will say so uh, yes there are a lot of batshit crazy and a lot of it is exasperated is that the right word by and i'm sure there's batshit crazy males in the industry oh yeah in in general so no we can it's not sexist we can be real a lot of girls get in the industry at 18 19 20 years Mm -hmm. old and they get handed thousands of dollars and then someone's like oh want to do some drugs so uh it's a lot of the drugs just kind of changes people a lot Mm -hmm. i will say uh Oh, my God, I don't even know. There's so many. But (laughs) basically, there are some girls in the industry, and this is a whole different world and a different fetish, but there are girls that uh, take the poop, the stuff that comes out of your body, shit, and uh, use it. Use it how? In sexual ways what? like they're into it yeah i guess yeah so okay. that, girls want cup style. yes that kind of thing and i like never thought that i would see stuff like that that's totally like its own 
once in a while you will see like a Twitter page that will be like, oh my God, I want to smell your farts. And then I'll click on it and it's all just like yeah. that type of like Interesting. Scat, so scat. have you worked with girls where they'll do that? No. Okay. Oh my God. Oh. No. No. Oh, you just heard about it. You heard about it. <laughs> so they'll, there's this one girl, like I said, not going to say names, but there's this one girl that came in the industry and I don't know what is her problem or mm-hmm. w- why she is the way she is but she came in and she's just like she likes getting up oh okay punched Got it. really hard in the face like not like mm-hmm. you know some girls like a little slap yeah. i get that pleasure is pain but this girl really wants to get rocked um and gets turned on by it and then she also does like that mm-hmm. scat oh, stuff yes. so it's not so much like a a story it's just a stuff I've been seeing and getting other girls to do it there there was this one girl that was supposed to be in one of the scenes in my film from this year it was supposed to be a a scene that I wasn't in but a scene with three girls and then a guy and uh, she did a video with that girl doing that stuff Mm -hmm. and I was just straight up like I can't like, you, yeah. can't, you can't be in my movie. I'm sorry. Like, I don't want to be associated with anything. I understand that's a fetish and, like, pe- some people are into that, but that's totally illegal. And I think is it's... It? Yeah. Scat oh, is even... totally illegal. It's obscenity. You can go to jail for that. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Wow. So, and they post it publicly. So, for me, that was just... Yeah. Is that, pee content illegal as well? I don't. I don't think it is. Okay. I think, you know, because like, it's like, no, I don't think it is. But but it's a totally different level, in my opinion, with yeah, that. So, for sure. you know, that it doesn't involve me, but that kind of thing goes sure. on and it just is crazy. And then there was this whole drama last year. I don't even know if I should get into this, but uh, there was this drama where there was these two girls that are kind of both really popular and r- big rivals of each other going back and forth, subtweeting each other, saying things. And then one girl implied that the other girl, um, like fucked a dog. Oh no. Uh, so, uh, remember this, but yeah. Remember so that. nobody knew if that was true or not. Um, but she basically just put that out there and then it came out that like a bunch of girls had, done that with this there's this one creepy guy he i'm not going to say any names but this one creepy guy that he was this really big fat guy that looked like a viking and he was really weird he like got his nipples removed and just a total freaky weirdo but was paying girls have sex with a dog not paying Uh. so he would invite girls this is what all came out he would invite girls over to hang out give them drugs alcohol whatever and then like get in their mind somehow and like convince them that that was like a totally normal thing that people do and then have them do it and record videos of it and just like keep that for himself i guess oh my god yeah so uh that all came out it was totally like Nobody talked about it. And then this one girl one day just tweeted and was like, why does nobody talk about how blank does that? And then all these girls started being like, wow, I can't believe you're saying this. Like, he tried to get me to blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, so I guess that's probably the craziest thing. That's pretty crazy. That is really crazy. I wonder, like, he must have, like... And he disappeared. Like, he he was was a photographer, like, very much involved in the industry he worked for a lot of different reputable companies and then he just i don't know if he moved to mexico or something like he deleted his twitter and he dropped off yeah probably smart for him that's yeah because he was gonna get fucking investigated for sure or something but yeah so just that and that's kind of like i can't be near any of that stuff because it's just so disgusting to me and yeah, like, that's you really know, scary stuff. I felt really empowered in this industry. Like, I, I like being in this industry. But then stuff like that, like the poop stuff or, like, that type of, like, abuse comes out and makes me think, what the fuck am I There's doing? There's bad eggs everywhere. <laughs> There's yeah, bad eggs. Yeah. True. It's terrible. But not every industry has vulnerable young people right. that are taking their clothes off and, you know, getting propositioned to do something awful like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And they might think, yeah, it's okay to do that. And it's yeah. not that bad. Or, the, yeah, they just think, like, drugs. They don't think, mm-hmm. period. <laughs> like, it's it's such a mind fuck. Have but. you ever been asked to do any, like, poop-related content on your no. OnlyFans? No. Oh, my God. You can't even talk about that on there. Mm-hmm. And I would never. I don't. I've tried so hard to, like, get into the mentality of someone that is into that and think about, like, what is it about that that turns you on? You know, there's a whole subreddit about that fetish. Like, it's called, like, I don't remember the name. But Mm -hmm. I really was reading, like, all these posts and trying to think about, like, what do people find hot about that? And I just, I'm very open, but for the life of me, I just can't, I can't dig it. (laughs) <laughs> I don't quite understand either. Maybe they were exposed to that when they were young or yeah, something. Yeah, it's always something. something. Some like, it's something. I mean, I have a, I guess you could call it, like, a daddy fetish. Not, like, a father type thing, mm-hmm. but just, like, a, a protector, I guess. Like, an yeah. older man that's, like, a little dominant. But um, Same. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know where that comes from, but probably somewhere deep-rooted in me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't blame people for having that fetish, but uh, I think it's really disgusting. No, no kink shaming, but sorry. We can kink shame that Certain one. Certain things, because yeah. Because that's, yeah. It's that's illegal really and it's, yeah, disgusting. Yeah. It's not good for you. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of fetishes I don't understand that I don't even think are disgusting. Like, even, like, the people who are really into, like, soles of feet. Yeah, just feet in general. Uh, it doesn't gross me out or anything. Like, cool that you're into that. But mm-hmm. I don't understand how they got into, like, from my perspective. I'm yeah. just like, why are you so into soul? It's the most feet? popular. Yeah. Foot fetish is by far the most mainstream popular yeah. fetish. Because it's harmless, I think. It so is harmless. Like, yeah. and yeah. socially know, acceptable, kind of. Yeah. I enjoy, like, I like having my feet done stuff, yeah. too. Like, caressed, Same. whatever the case. Uh-huh. But I'm, I don't get turned on by other people's feet. Even, like, really pretty girls with really nice feet. It, it doesn't, like, turn me on sexually. I'll, yeah. I can right. admire it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, aesthetically, it's really nice. Yeah, same here. Yeah, yeah, I can, like, yeah, look at pretty feet. I like sucking on feet. Yeah. But it's not really, like, a huge turn on no. for me. I just like to give pleasure. So if somebody mm-hmm. likes that, right. then I would like to do that. And exactly. that it does turn me on, but... Not because of the feet specifically, mm-hmm. so it's interesting for sure. Yeah, I wonder where that foot, where the foot fetish comes from. I'm sure if you like Wikipedia, it there's mm-hmm. like the whole extensive history. Have you heard of Wiki Feet? Oh yeah, of course. Well, I watch a H three podcast. Okay, and they oh yeah, freaking <laughs> there's this Ethan. whole yeah this whole yeah. lore. Not anymore. It kind of died out, but like. He just, for some reason, his feet were rated, like, a 7.5 out of 5, <laughs> which is just his He had, like, a foot fans. army or something. Yeah, yeah. foot soldiers. Uh-huh. But um, Jules just made to the front page of Wicked Feet. Really? I was feet of the day. That's amazing. It just means that uh, the owner, the creator of the site, like, really likes your feet. Because cool. I, I, I think he personally probably selects. Oh, there you go. The well, people. shout out um, the guy that runs Wikifi. Yeah. I really appreciate the <laughs> honor. <laughs> shout out to you. No, but for real, when you think about it, like this guy had a dream and he said, why is there no website that is just <laughs> specifically <laughs> foot content for mm-hmm. celebrities too? Not just like porn stars, but yeah. a lot of people get turned on by like like Angelina Jolie's feet. They oh, I just like, thought of a good one. Wiki belly button. I'm going to start, oh, belly- yeah. <laughs> start a belly button site. I like or belly stomachs. buttons. I, yeah, yeah I like stomachs. just stomachs. I understand mm-hmm. a yeah. belly button. Not a fetish because there's. I found out there's a difference between a fetish and a kink. So oh. a kink oh, is okay. just uh, something that you're into that can like enhance the sex. Mm-hmm. A fetish is like specifically you need that oh, to get off. Okay. I have a stomach kink. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to make a stomach wiki. You so, should. And yeah. that's why I have a belly button ring because I think uh, it just enhances every stomach. Yeah, I have. I got my belly button pierced when I was like 16, but Same. I never wear it anymore. It'll probably, if you put something in, it'll still go through. Yeah, I think it will because I had it in there for a long time. Yeah. But I just, I don't know. I need to find like some dainty, pretty jewelry. Like. Yeah, mine's like a, it's like a hanging. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, Where'd I, you get it? Just a store in the mall. Were those real diamonds? No. (laughs) Imagine. That'd be amazing. (laughs) That'd be be so cool. I'd be rich. Yeah. All right. I have one more question. Yes. And this is how I end my podcast. Yes. (laughs) Would you want to kiss sometime? 
Yeah, I was okay. actually gonna ask if we could uh, do that yeah. or do something. Okay, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to kiss right now? Yeah. <laughs> What's your track record? Like, how many pods have you done, and how many girls have you kissed from the pod? Um, has anyone said no? Nobody has said no. You are my <laughs> fourth guest, and I've kissed everyone but one because my first guest I was actually sick so I didn't want oh, to no. get her sick what kind of um, kisses is he just a peck or you really like go for it I just kind of like do like a little kiss yeah okay, it's, it's not but really I want to see I want to see one where you go for it <laughs> I'm a <Pervert>. full send <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to different I okay let's it switch it up different. maybe we'll do like a little bit of a a make out but not like crazy not crazy okay absolutely <laughs> oh my god should we take off our headphones? Yeah. I would say, yeah, probably. Oh my gosh, that was hurting my ear. Yeah, it feels weird to have them off now. Like. <laughs> mm. Your lips are so <laughs> soft and juicy. Yes, wow. That was hot. That was amazing. Well, like we'll threw definitely. The microphone away. <laughs> We'll definitely be um, maybe making some content soon. Though. Yeah, I would. I would really love that. Okay, cool. Thanks well, for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on the pod. It was fun. It was so much fun. Love talking to you guys. Yeah, you should be. You should come on again. Maybe I would we love can to. do like a dating thing. I think that would be oh so my fun. God, I would actually love to if I could get like. A, see, even the the whole application process is a little weird to me because I'm just like. Uh, it's like too you're too like simpy and mm-hmm. planning it out but you know you never know maybe I could find someone that would really uh wow me yeah it might be so fun I'm down to do it okay cool well Jane's gonna be on the podcast <laughs> again <laughs> yeah I'm excited all right cool all right thank you thank you and that's the end that's the end baby <laughs>